Hey guys, it is Mick. Welcome back to more Persona 3 FES. In the last one, we uh, got visited by the mysterious boy, who we have learned is Pharos, and Fuka has joined our team. Uh, in this one, we're going to be going to Tartarus. So, let's uh, get going. From now on, Yamagishi will support us, and I'll take part in the exploration. I've also decided that I'll allow you to select the members of your battle party. I realize that this is a big responsibility, but I believe you can handle it. I appreciate- oh. Um, I'll be taking Mitsuru-senpai's place from now on. Thank you. Uh, well, for starters, we we are actually not going to be adding Mitsuru to our party for, for this go. Uh, but- she wields one-handed swords, like she explained earlier, as she is a fencer. Uh, and her persona, it excels in ice and healing spells. Uh, and also, Marin Karin. Um, which is somewhat of a meme in the Persona 3 community, because uh, when left to her own devices... Mitsuru will use Marin Karin in scenarios that it's not quite the most appropriate to use, such as when you need healing, or when it's simply a better idea to just kill the enemy. And, um... It has a low odds of success as well. I think it's like 25% or something like that. I personally never had much of a problem with it, but I know, but I have to address it because I know that I'm going to eat those words eventually. But we won't be using her for this exploration. For for this one, we are going to be going with the default three party members, Yukari, Junpei, and Agihiko. Uh, otherwise, let's go and see Elizabeth. Because we have some requests to turn in. First off, oh my, you actually brought it. Is that what everyone is so afraid of? An anatomical model is merely a replica of the human body. I don't understand what people find so repulsive about it. If you ask me, it's rather charming. Oops, the face came apart. Anyway, you have my gratitude. I'll take good care of it. And our reward is the land badge, which I'm not quite sure what that'll do. I'll have to check that. And this must be the brand of protein specifically designed for amateur athletes. So this type of protein does exist. Then the name protein doesn't have anything to do with professionals. I see. Would you suggest Amachine then? Thank you very much. I am sure this is valuable, so please take it back with you. As a result of this request, my master has ordered me to drink an entire bottle of protein in one go. Well, what's done is done, and this way, I might be able to go professional someday. I believe in you, Elizabeth. I support you. Please accept your reward, which is Fierce Sutra, uh, which I believe is just a, a pocket Tarukaja. Uh, well, let's see. These will take on when we are are done in Tartarus. Uh, we need Archangel or similar for that. That will do later. That we can't do. This will do eventually. I think right now the ones we want to request or accept are bronze figures from the, the bronze dice on floors 41 to 46. And then snakes, or yeah, snake scales, which we'll get from the lustful snakes from the the red shadows, just in Arca block. So we'll get those later as well. If we don't get them on the way up, which we probably won't, then I will grind for them somewhat off screen, as per usual. And you know what? For now, let's let's fuse some personas. I think it's a good idea to. 
I don't want to get rid of Valkyrie. But... Oh, well. Um, let's see. So, Ada... I'm going to do this until I have it so it carries on both of my auto skills. Because that's important to me. Well, that went much uh, easier than I expected. And, wow, this thing has, like, a physical attack. And that's it then, huh? Raccoon does pretty nice to, to inherit. So yeah, we got uh, Archangel. Yes, this persona is acceptable. I am Archangel. Let us together tread down the path of strife. And because we have a level... Six social link with Chihiro. It's gonna level up a little bit. We're probably we're gonna get Patra. We'll probably get Holy Arrow as well. Yeah. All right. What is deals light pierce damage and charms one foe? Um. I'm gonna be honest. I don't have. Good luck with instant kill moves. Uh, there's an in, there's a story I have in in this game where I use a persona that you get much later that gets gets a uh, a a unique spell where it's able to kill the entire field with like eighty percent chance rolled individually, uh, and I. It's a dark spell, and I used it on enemies that were weak to dark, which, in theory, should have increased that that uh, likelihood even further. So it's a 4 out of 5 chance under normal conditions. I got it to work maybe 1, like, the reverse probability, 1 out of 5 times. So it's just like, I just don't have good luck with instant kill moves, so I'm just going to get rid of Hama. It's not worth as much to me. I would like to get that Mazio. Uh, especially because I believe the um, the boss coming up is weak to Zio moves, so... Um, hmm. I'll get rid of Sukikaja. I think Sukikaja is useful to have, but I do like... I have the auto on myself, and I do like Rakukasha better, and we don't want to load this thing up with too many stat boosts, I think. Yeah, I think that'll that'll do. And now we want to make sure to just keep Angel and Archangel for the fusion spell, so I should just accept that now. What else can I make? Zo Choten. Uh, what do I have on each of these? Anything I need to... Take over. Not. I don't need the the auto, so I won't worry about that. What is that? No, I just said I don't need auto. <laughs> rage boost without without it having any rage, huh? No, I should have just gone with the first one. I'm not accepting a rage boost when I don't have anything that increases rage. Oh my god. I am begging you. Alright, clearly rage boost is just coming with it. Maybe I can replace it later. So yeah, this is fine, I suppose. <laughs> Go off, Zochoten. I am Zotroten. From this day forth, I shall be with you. The Kendo team social link has infused it with power. Not quite enough to get sharp student, but that's okay. What else can we... Uh, 
Inugami. Yeah? Yeah, sure. We'll, we'll do Inugami. Anything I'm particularly attached to on any of these? Not particularly. Uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. But we have no social link here, so it's not gonna... ...really give us any benefit. I am Inugami. You and I are one in the same. I can't believe Inugami is kidding us. Uh, anything else I would... I don't want to get... I could just summon... Yeah, I'll just buy back Angel. It's not going to be that big of a deal. Um, because I do... I do want a Persona here. Yeah, I do want a Persona here with healing spells. Let's just see if there's anything else I could... Yeah, it's going to get Patra and Zio, like, no matter what. Oh, Tadakaja, but nah, we have that elsewhere, I think. Yeah, sure. And we've yet to establish Priestess, so we're not going to get anything for it, but that's fine. This persona seems to be hiding something. Um, I am Unicorn. I will shield you and heal your wounds. So this is another persona with an item inside it. I still haven't gotten an item from any of these these guys, but it's how it be sometimes. Because you're just not I find you're just not holding on to personas long enough to really get the items from the low level ones. Uh yeah, and we want Angel. And I'm going to accept the justice request. There we go. And I wanted to check what the uh, land badge was. It's definitely like an equip. Is it worth equipping over the warrior seal? Restores a tiny bit of HP every turn. Uh, actually, I think that's very uh, useful for the protagonist. Um, Yukari, what do you have equipped? I wouldn't mind putting the counter on you, because I figure you probably have... Oh, you have the spirit ring, which increases max SP. No, I think that's more useful for you because you are, you're the main healer at this point, so you want to have your SP around. You have the Slash Ward, which increases dodge against Slash. Alright, I, I guess that's also fine, so will we give this to Akihiko? If not, we'll give it to Mitsuru. You just have leather gloves. Okay, yeah, you can have the Warrior Seal. Alright! Now that all that is set, let us make sure that Archangel is equipped for our auto skills, and let's get going. I'll wait until we move into the next part of the block before I hand the mic over to whatever future me wants to talk about for this Tartarus exploration. And also, let's get into a fight to kind of just showcase what's different about Fuka. It's not much. Right, Yukari's still wearing the high-cut armor. I'm so sorry, Yukari. Am I... I do have the, the Mother Rapier, right? Yeah, so we have... I have all three auto skills. I have all the Chaos Emeralds. <laughs> let's go! I'm gonna be unstoppable. Except I won't. Yeah, let's just get into a fight. Whoops! Oh, and we can use justice right now here. But yeah, how this works is we already know what the Spurious Book is. But let's see, we can examine the Dancing Hand. And then after 
halves all foes HP via light magic, huh? All right. But yeah, after a couple turns, Fuka. We already showcased this in the the Emperor and Empress boss, didn't we? This is, I don't need to really talk about this, but yeah, see. But since we're we're already on the way, yeah, it will just show you all its weaknesses and resistances and such. Oh, poor uh, Junpei and me. I'm weak to wind too, it seems. If I die here, I swear to God. I was just trying to showcase justice. Yeah, I'm frozen. Now I've recovered. So this is weak against Zio, huh? What was that? I'm so mad. But yeah, see, light spells suck. Uh, sure, let's go for Yomotsushi Kome. No reason not to just go for extra fusion fodder, right? Yukari, please. I'm dying. I need heals. Thank you, Yukari. You're an angel. I'm so mad. What was that? I am also kind of on the lookout for certain enemies here. Because certain enemies on this floor... On these floors drop the... Turquoises we need for the one of the re the items for one of the requests, but I don't think it's any of these. So it it would be nice to get a hold of those, and they those enemies stop on the fortieth floor, I think. Oh, go off, Akiko! Get those get get, get those critical hits. Just wanted to see what was in this chest. Some money. All right. Money is always very useful, especially after we spent a little bit on Angel. So it's nice to get our reserves back. Oh, a rare chest with a Tristo gem. So just a pocket warp whenever I need it. I shouldn't. Actually, I might at some point. What were these guys weak to? We don't know. It wasn't Zio. Uh, it might be Pierce. Pierce and Zio is always a safe bet for birds. It's not. Ice, okay. Uh, we don't have ice on our person, though, so we're just gonna have to brute force this. And Junpei and myself are going to just eat shit, I suppose. I would love to. Yukari, I'm so sorry for what you're wearing and the weapon you are using. You're you're being done dirty right now. But hey, you leveled up, so not all is bad in the world. Goodbye. And now that the full moon has been taken care of, these, this pathway will uh, become unobstructed. So it's time to continue further into the Arca block. No shift just yet. Give me a moment and I'll check to see what's ahead. There's a strong one on the 50th floor. Please remember that. All right, well. Now that we're here, it's time to hand the microphone off, so catch you when we get to the mini-bosses.
So, today I thought it'd be fun to talk about the Persona 3 movies, seeing as we've just passed the point in the game where the first of them ends. And as such, I'll be focusing on the first one, but there are four, uh, each covering and named after one of the four seasons. Spring of Birth, Midsummer Night's Dream, Falling Down, and Winter of Rebirth. In the movie, our protagonist is named Makoto Yuki, which of the official names is my favorite, though a lot of people I know prefer his manga name, which is Minato Arisato. The movie is a rather pragmatic adaptation of the game. It shifts around a bit of the characterization and the events of the game in order to condense it into roughly six total hours across four movies. And as this is a very large game, of course you're missing some things. The biggest casualty is the social links. They're basically cut out entirely, with the social link characters being relegated to one-off scenes or in the background. Uh, in order in the first movie, there is a social link we have not started and haven't even met the character of yet uh, in the opening. We see a girl named Maiko, uh, who appears in the shrine alongside a dog. Also in the opening, we see Bunkichi and Mitsuko, who appear in Fuka's little introductory section in the bookstore. Uh, Kenji appears twice, once at the arcade with Makoto and Junpei, and then once alongside Kazushi, consoling Junpei after exam season. Uh, and then Kazushi also appears a second time, with him and Makoto practicing in Kendo Club. Furthermore, Hidetoshi is shown interrogating a student about Natsuki's friends at one point, which the group overhears, which in the movie becomes their prompt to go to the back alley for the scene with Shinjiro. And lastly, another social link we've yet to start, but we've seen the character for, is Nozomi, who appears in the background of Wild Duck Burger while the group is eating there. And speaking of the alley scene with Shinjiro, that contains one of my two favorite exchanges in the movie. <laughs> And the other is when the group discusses Mitsuru's speech. I mentioned that sometimes the scenes are shifted around for this movie. One example of this is right at the start. Uh, the movie opens, giving us a sort of explanation as to why Makoto was late to the dorm, in that his train was delayed due to someone throwing themselves onto the tracks, committing suicide. Uh, otherwise, there's a meeting shown between Ikutsuki, Mitsuru, and Yukari at the school, which tells us a bit earlier that Yukari is meant to be keeping an eye on Makoto to sort of gauge whether he has the potential or not. Tartarus exploration is largely out of focus because aside from the Emperor and Empress, the only other time they enter Tartarus is the initial explanation of it, which shows the initial trio fighting some shadows, shows that in the movie the weapons the group have come from the Kirijo group themselves as like specially modified equipment, uh, rather than coming from Officer Kurosawa and they fight one of the Tartarus Guardian's Rampage Drive on the first floor because of it, rather than when it appears in the game. The most important uh, shift in scenes, I think, is Fuka is introduced earlier, presumably because a part of the main arc of this movie revolves around her. A lot of things culminate in the Emperor and Empress full moon operation. For example, Makoto interacts with her directly and makes her acquaintance, once early on showing her getting bullied and he stops to help her pick up her books, and another time in the middle after Natsuki is once again bullying Fuka, Makoto helps her back to her feet again, so she treats him to some takoyaki and they talk about Fuka's relationship with Natsuki and why she sticks around. One thing that I noted already during the Let's Play is that during the scene when you join Seas, Ikutsuki and Mitsuru ask you if you're already aware of the Dark Hour, and you're only allowed to say no at that point. But in the movie, Makoto is perfectly aware of it and is used to it to the point of it doesn't even phase him anymore because he's experienced it for as long as he can remember, which to me honestly just makes more sense. Another important thing to note is that Makoto's ability of the wild card is a lot less versatile in the movie. Well, in the game, you can summon basically any persona you can fuse. In the movie, 
His deck is a lot more limited. He initially only has access to the Fool, and he only gains access to other Arcana after defeating the respective Full Moon Shadow. For example, he only summons Jack Frost after defeating the Magician at the start, and then Sarasvati after defeating the Priestess. And now for the juicy part. Initially, as a silent protagonist, Makoto is largely a blank slate for the player in the game. There are things that you can gleam about him, such as him being a very reserved person, but ultimately it's up to you, the player. But in the movie, he has a much more defined personality and arc. He's depicted as largely traumatized by his parents' death ten years prior to the game to the point of complete apathy. Prior to the movie, he bounces around from school to school, relative to relative, before finally ending up in Tatsumi Port Island. He's shown to be very impersonable, and as said, apathetic. And he shows a complete lack of regard for his own death, and tells Yukari straight up that he doesn't see death as scary, and he doesn't care whether or not he lives or dies. However, his apathy towards his own life is what enables him to fight so effectively. With no self-preservation instinct, he's able to go all out in battle without fear of injury or exhaustion allowing him to take on the aforementioned Rampage Drive with a single-minded determination. He does, however, fear seeing someone else die. Whenever someone's in danger in front of him, he has flashbacks to his own parents' death, and he near breaks down, such as when Yukari's in danger against the Magician, which leads to his awakening of Orpheus, just like in the game. Otherwise, he approaches his life very passively, and he doesn't really make any choices for himself or his own direction in life, and doesn't really have anything he holds dear. And he even only joined C's because he was asked to, and he didn't have a reason to say no. So a large part of his character arc in the movie is surrounding that, and him growing to care for himself and others and many of Makoto's interactions with others and discussions about him all talk about this, his motivations, his lack thereof, and he talks to a bunch of other people around him about what they care for, why they have to care, things like that. For instance, in one of the aforementioned discussions with Fuka, he asks her why he sticks around with Natsuki, and she talks about how she has to care about her because she's her precious friend, at one point on the train, Junpei and Yukari talk about Makoto's motivations, and they bring up that he probably doesn't have a strong reason to fight, and that he only really fights because he was asked to. And for a good chunk of the first movie, Makoto only really shows concerns for the other people around him if they are actively in a life-threatening situation. On the monorail, for example, when Junpei charges on ahead, Makoto flat out didn't care because Junpei said he had it handled, but it's only when Makoto and Yukari catch up, and they find Junpei is in a lot of danger, that Makoto actually starts to worry. And because of it, he takes control of the situation and both protects Junpei and relies on him to defeat the Priestess. As we approach the Emperor and the Empress, Yukari herself grows increasingly agitated with Makoto's detached and apathetic demeanor, noting that despite being acquainted with Fuka, he doesn't really seem to have any concern about her well-being and that she's in Tartarus, and it culminates in her lashing out at him and telling him not to come along if his only reason for taking part is that he was asked to. As a result, unlike in the game, he does not take part in this operation, instead staying behind to, badly, keep an eye on Natsuki and keep her safe. Here they have a conversation and they talk about why Natsuki bullied Fuka and how Natsuki sees a bit of herself in Fuka, which gives us some insight to Fuka's home situation, likely that she's being neglected, which also gives us some more insight as to why Fuka was so decisive about joining Seas in the first place. Makoto then also informs her about his conversations with Fuka earlier, about how Fuka considers her a dear friend, how she wants to apologize, which in turn gives Natsuki some pause and ultimately makes her decide to want to apologize to Fuka. Which then Natsuki leaves the dorm without Makoto even noticing, which like, good job bud, you had one job and you, you didn't do it. And then finally, Pharos himself shows up and tells Makoto like, hey bud, if you don't do anything, 
Natsuki and all your friends will die. Are you okay with that? Which forces Makoto to acknowledge that he does care and that he can't be so apathetic about the others. That he doesn't want to be alone. That he doesn't want to lose them. Which spurs him to action and helps him find his own reason to fight, which is to protect those he cares about. So, he finally makes up his mind, and he charges into Tartarus, riding Mitsuru's motorcycle, no less, and arrives in order to try and save everyone. Of course, at first, Makoto himself still struggles to take on the Emperor and Empress, having not learned the trick to their battle yet. And Mitsuru even orders him to take Natsuki and Fuka and leave, because she doesn't want a full party wipe. But he freezes up and essentially refuses because he doesn't want them to die. He doesn't want he doesn't want to abandon them and to be left alone. So he continues to stand his ground until Fuka realizes the trick of what's going on, which allows all of them to turn the tide. Back at the school, just before we get to the end of the movie, we see Natsuki apologizing to Fuka and uh, Junpei and Yukari talk about why she showed up at Tartarus in the first place, which they decide is because she wanted to help her friend, which makes Makoto crack his first smile in the movie, which it does not go unnoticed by Junpei and Yukari. Also worth noting that there is a post credit scene, but it shows a character we haven't met yet. But I will say that this character is my favorite character. I enjoy these movies a lot, and of course, as they are a condensed version of the game, I can't recommend them in place of the game. But if you've played the game, I definitely would really recommend the movies. I think they're very great supplementary, and I just think they're a very fun watch. But also, Makoto Yuki as a protagonist just means a lot to me, so that might be coloring it a little bit, but I do genuinely think they're really good. There are three shadows in the middle. Be careful! There sure are. We've, uh, we've made it up here, so we're gonna activate this device and take a quick double back down to the, um, the first floor. For one, to turn in one of the Elizabeth requests. It's a shame we couldn't get all five of the bronze figurines, but we got three of them, which is pretty okay. I'm I'm quite happy with that, because that'll mean we are going to be spending less time grinding after the fact. And now that we don't need Angel anymore... I have confirmed your casting of the fusion spell, Justice. Divine punishment from the two angels, although it was directed toward the shadows. It could give anyone a fright if they had committed a crime before. And we get Garula gems for that. That's pretty okay. Um, I'll just register Art Angel. Jack Frost and Yomotsu Shikome have better ones registered, I believe. Um, Frolic. Need Pixie and a Persona with a flower on its head. I don't believe I have any of that. No, but I'll, I'll keep that in mind. A Persona with a flower on its head. Um. All right. We'll figure out what we uh, will accept for requests later. Let's see what triangle spreads we got. So let's put these two in it. Oh, Oberon. And it's of the Emperor. Let's just double check. I, I want to carry Dio over, but otherwise I'm not particularly attached to either of these. Um, let's see. Alright, I'm- I'm sad- oh, it already has Medea. A uh, single target is still useful, because it costs less. Yeah, I'm ex- I accept this. 
I am Oberon. Our hearts are united. Let our journey together begin. Alright, am I going to get enough experience to get it to level 17? Or am I going to have to grind it a little bit? We're good! Nice! Alright, uh, Elizabeth. I have a request to accept and then turn in, but also I'm going to register Oberon real quick. And then accept request. Uh, Oberon level 17. Ah, I see you have an Oberon with you, and he is at a sufficient level. Did you know that a persona is another side of you? Just like you, it will grow and change. However, the rate at which it grows depends more on your social links than on fighting. I suggest you make many friends and deepen the bonds you've established. Please accept your reward. And coin of night. Right, the coins are for like permanent stat upgrades for personas. Uh, what is the new one you want for me. Vedela with Maragi. I don't know how to fuse Vedela, so that's going to be an uphill battle. And since it wants Maragi, presumably it hasn't come packaged with Maragi. Is Narcissus the one with the flower on its head? Yeah, so we want Narcissus and um, Pixie then. Nothing I can single or trio spread. Let's see what's here. Well, there's there's our Vedela, and it wants Miragi, but neither of these have Aki skills. So we're gonna want to come back to the drawing board on on that. I wonder if I can fuse because Pyrojack probably gets Miragi. So I wonder if I can fuse Pyrojack into it or something like that. Naga. I can't fuse Naga yet, though, because I'm level... 16. It looks like... Vedela wants a Justice and an Emperor. I'm not... I don't presume to fully understand how the fusion calculator works, but I know Arcana tends to be important. So it probably wants, yeah, a, a Justice and an Emperor then. So if I have an Emperor Persona with Miragi by the time I get to level 24, then that'll be the way to go. Um, well, now let's uh, save. Because you don't want to fight a boss without saving first. And now I think we are basically ready. So let's go up and fight. And here they are. Um, I have faith in you. Good luck. Thank you, Fuka. I will do my damnedest. This is not just a random shadow. It seems to be guarding this area. That it does. So these are the golden beetles. Uh, they are strong against all physical types. Like most enemies, they know light, or bosses, they know light and dark. And they know ice, which is why I didn't want to bring Mitsuru, because then she'd basically be dead weight, because she can't do physical, she can't do the, um, a lot, or the ice, so she'd basically just be relegated to healing only. Uh, I'm going to set Akiko. On knockdown. Yukari, right now you stand by and Junpei, you too. I want to figure out turn order first before I do anything else. Uh, otherwise, these guys, they're physical attackers. 
pretty much, and they can they can do some damage if you let them. So I'm gonna just try and knock them down first. And that's why I wanted Akiko on knockdown. Of course, it doesn't tell you. The AI just has to learn. So it goes... One sec, I'm going to... Okay, so one of them goes before Akiko. And then the other two go after him. Okay. So, now I think having Junpei... And, um... I'll put him on knockdown just because I don't want him to attack anything that is up. Or anything that is already down. So Junpei and... What words am I looking for? Junpei and Yukari should be safe to attack. I'm not weak to... Okay, I'm not weak to any physical attacks. That would have been a very good thing to look out for. This one's going to knock up the, the one, but that's fine. So yeah, the... Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, thank God. So, we're not going to be wanting to initiate all-out attacks with Akiko, because that'll bring up... That'll... Uh, bring two of them to their feet. Whereas if we do all-out attack with just us... We're not even going to be doing that, because we're, we're going to be... Rising this one to its feet and knocking the other two down, ideally. Well, thank you, Junpei. You didn't do a lot of damage there. Because, like, physical attacks don't do anything. Please start using your fire. But, ah, attack down, or defense down. Thank you. Very, um, very cool. Nope, we're going to leave it like this. I just don't want to give them a chance to attack at all. However, because of the pattern we have, one of them is always going to have a chance to attack. But that's fine. Because once, once it's done with... I guess it makes it makes sense now that Junpei is going for physical attacks because you can't get critical hit on magic attacks. Okay, yeah, that tracks now. But I'd prefer it that way anyway because having him knock down or having him use his attacks on the ones with more HP while they are like this is a risk I don't want to take. So I'm fine with Junpei currently being dead weight here. Oh, well, that sucks. Please hit Akiko. I would love to just all-out attack and kill that one now, but I'm not going to risk the other two waking up and just steamrolling me. So I'll wait for all-out attacks until those until the last one is down, and then this should go really quickly. The enemy has returned to normal, I understand. And then Yukari should be able to kill this one, though I am very scared of what it's going to do. 
Oh, thank God. With a two damage attack. Man, the damage really does does add up. I don't want to hear anybody talk down chip damage ever again. <laughs> Uh, you're going to have to wait just a little bit longer, Akihiko. <laughs> Chip damage is king, though. Oh my god. Uh, okay, Junpei, you can get off knockdown now. You can act freely. Mm. Now if both of my Zeos hit... Now I'll be able to start all out attacking because now Akiko will be the ones knocking them down for, um, oh yeah, for a safety. Whereas uh, Junpei and Yukari will also be dealing damage. Actually, all out attacking here might not be the worst of ideas. Because it'll just kill the one. I've been waiting for this. Yeah, sure. Okay. I can't wait till it gets a critical hit on me and ends my goddamn life. Okay, good. It's just dead flat out. I probably could have taken that a little bit much quicker if I wasn't playing it as safe as I was, but... I'm gonna play it safe, because I don't want to die against something I don't know how much damage it's gonna deal to me. And now, uh... The Golden Beetles are done. So now that we've completed this... Uh, this section of the Arca block... I believe it is time to go back and grind for turquoise, the snake scales, and the remaining two bronze statues. And then once that's over with, I'll just use as many, uh, I'll just grind for experience for as much as I can while exhausting everyone. Whoever, if the first person who gets exhausted, I'll go back and replace them with Mitsuru. And then from there, that team will just last as long as it lasts. So, for starters, we're just going to warp back here and hopefully get our two, tur tur uh, 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 our two tur turquoise on these floors. So I'm not going to make you watch all this, I'm just going to cut to when I get what I need for everything. We've already gotten three um, bronze figures, so that should go by smoothly, I just need to find the dice. And then I need to start finding red shadows for the Lustful Snakes. Well here's our Lustful Snakes, I don't know what they're weak to yet, hopefully Zeo. So we need, I believe, three scales from these things. And as they are lustful snakes, they're probably going to be inflicting Mar and Karin on us. So we want to be... <laughs> Ice, of course. The one element we don't have access to right now because I didn't bring Mitsuru. Uh, well, if someone gets tired here, I know to start looking to... to Looking for these with me too, too, then. Good, uh, good to know. Ooh, they do. Oh, God. Oh, thank God. I just know that I'm gonna get a very unfortunate. Last rights given to me beat by these goddamn snakes with Hama skills. Please miss. Oh, I hate video games, actually. That's okay. I didn't prepare for this. I should buy more revival beads. 
be very good to have uh, a lot more than one on hand. Jesus Christ. Just give me your give me your snake scales, please. Oh, two of them. That's incredibly convenient. Now I just need one more of them. Oh, our Archangel levels up and we get sharp student for that, I believe. Which does what? Lowers odds of sustaining a critical hit. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll I'll take that. Uh, I've been I've been using my sword, so I think slash isn't as important. And if it is, well, then regrets, mistakes were made. Just I know someone just leveled up, but I have no idea who. Let me just double check. Yeah, we need three, so I need to find one more of those guys. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah! All right, we're done with bronze figurines. So we just need turquoise and one more snake scale. I see you've brought five bronze figurines as I requested. Thank you. The shadows you defeated to obtain them had an affinity for the fortune, Arcana. It's unfortunate that Persona must assume such a ridiculous form. Please accept your reward. The Sigma Drive! Uh-huh. I've grabbed some personas along the way, some low-level personas, so let's see what I can offload them into. Uh, I believe Barith is new. Yeah, let's let's give ourselves a Barith. Why not? Wait, hold on. What is it? Poisma and Cleave. Yeah, that's acceptable. There's nothing really other for it to inherit, and it's rank 8, so it's gonna get most of its moves right here and now. I am Barith, the stalwart harbinger of thy victory. Ooh, it has a Miragi. Ooh, so if we can... Fuse this into Vedela, then that would be much ideal. Or if we can at least fuse it into something that can give us Vedela. Like Archangel. Except we're using Archangel. So, Principality? I just gotta make sure it carries Meraki over to it. Yeah. Alright, let's uh, try this then. I am Principality. I was born of thee, and I shall walk by thy side. Oh, it learns Recarm. That's incredibly useful. I should have... Registered Barith, just in case that this doesn't work. Uh, but I am going to register Principality. Alright, um... 
Can I get Vedela from Principality? Yes, I can. Okay, so we're gonna want to keep Oberon just stalked then. Yeah, all right. Let's just see if there's a triangle spread anywhere that's worth it. <laughs> just Titan? That's not Titan. Legion, ooh. Take Minakata, cool. Power! Oh, and Elagor. Hello? That's way too rich for our blood at the moment, but... Alright, cool. Alright, so yeah, we're gonna wanna... Stock... <laughs> Ober Oberon and uh, Principality for a while so we can get Vedela with that... That, uh... Sweet, sweet Miragi. All right, I wanted to see what the Sigma Drive is. Lowers chance of sustaining and critical hit. So, I think we actually already have one of those that we've equipped on... ...on, uh, someone. <laughs> Great first, uh, fight, Mitsudu. Well done. Well, we got one of them from the Steel Gygus, so... Uh, there's hope. Not a lot, but there's hope. Mitsuru, it already has a status infliction. <laughs> Please wake up and try something else. Oh my god. Well, I got these ones from the uh, bronze dice. So now we have two, uh, we have two turquoise. So all I need left is the snake scales. <laughs> my skills have improved. Which is gonna be a bit risky considering our uh, current status, but we'll do our best. Oh god. Please have mercy. Okay, that's... Okay. <laughs> Mitsuru, please knock down uh, Akiko. Heal support for now. Um, and I will... Also heal support. With Medea, so you two don't die uh, next turn. Mitsuru, I'm counting on you, babe. Oh, Tarunda, that's actually incredibly helpful for you to use. Thank you. So true, King. If these guys don't give me my snake scales, I'm going to be very sad, because... Yeah, they have Marin Karin. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna be very sad because... I have a Discharm, don't I? Yeah. This has taken me... A little bit. To, to find, like, at least, like, 20 or 30 minutes. Just for... A strong shadow like this. I almost don't want to all out attack here. And in fact, I won't just because I'm scared. <laughs> I don't want to die to these things. Is that cowardly? Yes! I probably could have killed them. 
But, uh... This... This really took so long. And I... Don't want to lose that time. And I'm, I'm already risky in doing this when everyone is tired, you know? Once again, if I don't get a snake scale, I'm going to cry live on camera. I'm surprised that was enough for shuffle time, truth be told. I probably should have gone for experience or coins. Oh, thank God. Just one that I needed to. Alright, let's uh, get the hell out of here as soon as we can. I could just use my Tristo gem, and if I find myself uh, unable to get to either stairs or warp without... Go screw yourself. I will I will do this dance around you if I must. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> we got to leave. We got to get out of here right here right now. <laughs> Fuka, there are snakes after us. We're gonna die. And now everyone's gonna go back to the dorm, which is Well, Mitsuru's still here, but I'm also tired, so like it's not it's not worth it to go back in. Sorry, Mitsuru. You'll get your turn next time, I think. What boss is next? Yeah. Yeah, next time Mitsuru will get her her moment. Um, I see you've brought three snake scales as I requested. Thank you. The Lustful Snake is quite a strong enemy, but still you were able to defeat it. As I suspected, great power sleeps deep inside you. I look forward to seeing you unlock your true potential. Please, accept your reward. Oh, we're rich. We got like a thousand bucks. And that should be all for right this minute but we should be able to get the goggle eyed idol next door in town and our reward is the blade fist which i've actually already found and equipped on agiko maybe we could use that who knows uh this we can't do this we can't do this we can do so okay we'll we'll accept the glasses cloth thing i would like something used to wipe spectacles yeah I'll accept Iwatodai Station, and we'll we'll go do that next time we're in town. Uh, and then we'll accept this. Cool. Cool. And now let's, um... Archangel and Principality, I want to register, I believe. Whoo, boy. And now that that harrowing experience is out of the way, we're going to end things off here. So, thank you so very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. And the next time, we will leave and go do those other requests we accepted. Until then, have a fantastic day, why don't you?